are big purchasers of GPS systems. <laughs> well, in fact, not the sheep themselves, of course, but the farmer who has to look after them. Because imagine, we're up in the hills, it's raining, got lots of sheep, they're all over the place. You don't really want to be out looking where they are. And your dog refuses to go. So just strap one of these receivers to one of the backs of the sheep. Sit at home, cup of tea, and you monitor the position of the sheep. So what have we seen today? We've seen that time is really something strange. For us, we perceive it going forwards but we're not necessarily very good clocks for measuring its passing. That's why we've had to create machines to do that for us. And that story of the machines to measure time is almost like a mini history of civilization itself. And by being able to subdivide time into minutes and seconds, minutes and seconds now mean something to us rather than just kind of passing through. We can actually do something with those small divisions of time. We've also seen that time is actually something very physical. Time doesn't mean much unless you say how you're going to measure it. That's why we still say three o'clock. Because we say three of the clock. We're specifying the machine that we use to measure and detect time. So is that it? We've actually done it. We've actually conquered time. We've got accurate clocks. We've got a synchronized world. Problem solved. <coughs> Wrong. Because at the beginning of this century, there was a bombshell. Scientists were looking at the movements of the planets. And most of them moved exactly as predicted by Newton's laws. Those same laws that we demonstrated with Newton's cradle. Except for Mercury. Now Mercury always seem to be doing something it shouldn't be doing according to the prediction of Newton's laws. There were very tiny time differences between the prediction of Newton's laws and what actually was seen. And so people thought this must be a problem with the measurement of time or maybe the measurement of distance. <coughs> but it turned out that it was a problem with time itself. Now, I have a problem with time itself because I've run out. But in the next lecture, I'll tell you more about this. Thank you. If you'd like a copy of the booklet that accompanies this year's lectures, please send a cheque or postal order for £4.95 made payable to BBC Education to Arrows of Time, PO Box 7, London, W12 8UD. Credit card orders by telephone on 0990 100 789. And the second of Dr. Neil Johnson's lectures is at the slightly earlier time of 11.15 tomorrow morning here on BBC Two. Next today, President Lincoln's reign is starting to slip. Or is it? The acclaimed series The American Civil War continues in a moment.